Where has this year gone? Eight months down with four months left to go. We had one market step back quite a bit with the other two markets just chugging along, making the market crashers, well, shed a lot of tears. If you're looking to hear about Massachusetts real estate market data for the month of August for single family homes, condos, as well as multifamilies, then you're in the right place. Real quick, my name is Jeff Chubb and I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent and I've sold more than a thousand houses. We get calls, texts, and emails from folks just like you who are looking to make a move in Massachusetts. And we absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to make a move in the next nine or 90 days, it doesn't matter. Give us a call, shoot us a text, or stop by YouTube Real Estate Agent.com. Just fill in your information, then we'll reach out to you. Let's start with single families. In August of 2023, we saw 3,797 single family homes sell for an average sales price of $788,000. Surprise, surprise, sales were down this month. We're a foreign shoe on this front. It's quite frankly what we're used to. August sales numbers were not great. They were off 24% from the same month last year when 4,998 units closed. Sales are down 22.5% year to date. I've said so many times that the year over year sales numbers should start, well, tightening. I felt that it was going to happen in September. And it kind of makes sense because I remember how there was just this final push in sales to get in on that lower interest rates. When I was just reflecting on August of last year and what was going on. Now, September is my make it or break it month for this prediction. So for what we lost on the sales side, though, we actually gained on the price side. It's another tough month for the markets going to crash, folks. August was the highest year over year pricing level increase so far in 2023 for single family homes. When I did this video last month, it was a 5.1% increase year over year. But that number was revised down slightly to 4.84% when some additional July sales were recorded well into the August data. No matter which way you slice it, it's been a great two months for home prices and sellers in the state of Massachusetts. This also means that home prices are up 3.46% year over year for the first eight months of 2023. Remember when everyone was saying that it was a surefire fact that home prices were going to tank? I wonder where those experts are today. But to be clear, I do see the fall market being weaker. It's going to be better than last fall, but it still isn't going to be a walk in the park. I'm just trying to set some expectations for sellers. And for home buyers, this means there could be some amazing values out there. So sales are down and prices are up. Yes, you have heard this story before, but let's dig into the numbers a little deeper because there are some, well, worrisome points in all of this data. It just was not pretty when compared to other August sales levels. The 3,797 units sold was 62 units shy of sales levels that we saw back in August 2011. The great news is that it was 605 units or nearly 19% higher than August of 2010. Point is, yes, the sales levels were not great, but they have been worse. I'm really looking forward to seeing a change with this chart, but this is now 26 consecutive months of year over year sales declines. So these are the sales levels. What proof that sales and prices don't necessarily correlate? Well, then look no further than this graph. If the sales level decreases coincide with inventory level decreases, then you won't see a decrease in prices. Fun fact, you'd have to go back to May of 2020 to see a month over month price decrease. That month, it was a decrease of 0.06%. What was happening again in May of 2020? Uh, uh, yeah. So let's talk about inventory because if we have continued sales weakness, then we can't see inventory grow. Or I should say, we can't see inventory grow too much. This chart is going to show you that, well, all is good in the inventory world. But when we dig a little deeper, then there may be some bad news deep in the data. So it's another month of record low inventory in the single family market. Inventory levels are down by 22.7% compared to the same time last year and 16.5% from the previous all-time low in August of 2021. And when you compare our market inventory level to the last time we had this type of sales activity, which would have been back in August of 2011, then we currently have 6.6 .6 times fewer homes on the market than we did last year. When we look at inventory levels like this, then all looks great from a market standpoint. Yes, sales levels are down, but inventory, it remains tight. But we aren't seeing the absolute stupid appreciation rates of the past. 3%, that's sustainable. That is exactly where we want it and, well, need to be. So where is the problem, child? 
take a look at this weekly year-over-year inventory comparison chart for 2021 through 2023. The gap is closing. This is a very recent development. The month of August was a rough month for inventory levels. We went from 1,855 unit difference between 2023 and 2022 inventory levels in the beginning of August to 1,054 units by the beginning of September. It's a big question as to what September will bring. I did not see this happening. I did not see inventory increasing like it did. I'm really going to enjoy each week digging into the data and doing my market reports because it's going to be really interesting for a data nerd like myself. On August 22nd, we hit an inventory peak for the year of 4,023 units. I expect this peak to be broken as we ramp into the fall market with a September inventory buildup. Now, quick recap. So sales of the single family market, they were off by 24%, while inventory was off by 22.7% off of last year's numbers. Will this imbalance continue? If so, then be prepared for an inventory build this fall, which would be great news for home buyers. Now, I've said more times than I can count that as long as inventory levels stay low, then there will be no housing price corrections. Continue to watch this story as it all develops. The book has almost finished printing on this year, and we're going to end up with home prices being up this year, quite frankly. But by how much? Time's going to tell. But if inventory starts to shoot up, then that could set us up for, well, an interesting 2024. Speaking of home prices, let's look at what they've done compared to other months and over the years. How about Dem Apples? The average sales price is following the trend of hitting peak pricing in June, then retreating for the rest of the year. Get ready to start hearing about how home prices are going down soon because, yes, I can make the claim that home prices are down by 3.8% from their peak. But how dumb would I sound saying that when you have this graph of yearly data in front of you showing you the entire picture? Month over month doesn't matter. Stay focused on the year over year data. Next up is the condo market and then the multifamily market. But first, if you like hearing about the Massachusetts real estate market, then please consider subscribing. And if you could do me a huge favor, can you please hit that like button? It just makes a huge difference that YouTube algorithm and pushes the video out to more people just like yourself. And it just makes an enormous difference to me. Thank you. For the month of August, we saw 1,533 condos closed in Massachusetts for an average sales price of $704,000, which was down from last month's crazy number. But it's still a big number this month. Let's talk about sales levels first. They were off. The 1,533 units sold was a 20.9% decrease compared to last August when 1,937 units closed. It's following the trend of a sales level peak in June, then decreasing sales. But this month's 20% year-over-year decrease is a considerable amount higher than July's 14% decrease in sales. There is no hiding it. Sales levels remain low. This month's jump to 20% also ends the three-month trend where we were seeing this spread between the same time period of last year and this year decreasing. It's not pretty when you look at an August sales comparison for the last 13 years. Our sales levels this August were pretty much what we saw back in August of 2011. This is definitely a step back from last month when we were over the sales levels we saw back in 2011 and fell a little short of the levels of July 2012. The home price affordability is not great right now. I'm not surprised about these decreased sales. We're in a sales ditch right now, if you will. At some point, we'll start digging ourselves out. When you ask, I got no idea. And well, neither does anybody else. Inventory is still at an all-time low for August. But as we have talked about, the amount between the year over year is quickly shrinking. The bad news for buyers is that we now only have 10% below the inventory levels of August last year. The good news is that inventory levels are still four times less than inventory levels back in 2011, which was when we last saw the amount of sales taking place in the condo market. I guess the good news and bad news really depends on which side of the market you're on. As a year over year comparison, sales were down 24%, while the amount of new listings were down 14%, because we had 3,976 new listings hit the market in August of 2023, compared to the 4,627 that hit in August of 2022. This is what buyers want to hear. Remember last month how the year-over-year -year prices were up over 20%? August wasn't as strong of a month as July, but it still showed up for the party. Well, if we get to that in just a moment, the sales levels of 1,533 units were down 20.9% compared to the August of 2022. 
While sales were down, the trend was in line with what we generally see historically speaking. That's the bad. Now let's talk about the great. It's been a phenomenal two months for the condo market. July was an outlier of a month, but August was down from that crazy July. If history is an indicator, it will go down a little and then start to level out. But the average sales price of $704,000 was 13.9% year over year sales price increase. This is pretty crazy. In the first six months of the year, the average sales price was up 2.5%, then 5.4% when you added in the July data, and now 6.43% when you factor in August data. Your question should be, Jeff, what is going on here? I'm digging deep here, but this is what I see. In July of 2023, there were 32 condos that sold for more than $3 million. This is compared to the 10 condos that sold for more than $3 million in July 2022. In August 2022, there were 10 condos that sold over $3 million, which is compared to the 23 units that were sold in August of 2023. This is my explanation for the huge year-over-year -year increases. If we instead looked at median sales prices, then July 2023 would be up 7.5% year-over-year, while August year-over-year -year would be up 9.6%. No matter which way you slice it, it's good to be a condo owner in the state of Massachusetts for the last two months. So the median information, well, that ended up taking me down a rabbit hole, quite frankly. While the peaks and troughs were not as aggressive as the averages, they are still there with the median prices. This year was definitely broken out of the traditional range, and I expect next month we should start seeing the pricing trend line going down for both the average as well as the median sales prices. And now, for my very quick but shameless plot. If you're thinking about buying or selling a home, then reach out to me today as it would be a true honor to help you and guide you through the process. Now onto the multifamily market. The multifamily market is back to its old habits again. After two solid months, prices were down in August. Not awful, but we're going to get to that in a second. In August of 2023, we saw 46 multifamily homes sell for an average sales price of $730,000. As we all would expect, sales were down. Year over year, they were down 31.1%. Now, year to date, the year over year decrease in sales is 32.2%. So that 31%, I guess, isn't horrible. But we have been going in the wrong direction, as in June, the year over year sales decrease was 28.2%, and then July, it was 29.9%, and now the 31.1%. Gotta say, not loving the trend. And then, when you put it this way, the 467 multifamily properties sold was the lowest all the way back to when I started collecting data back in 2010. Yes, I could go back further in data, but I begin to worry about the quality of it all when you start going back into earlier years. So it's not great. Now let's take a look at the inventory levels. Yes, sales are at an all-time low, but so is inventory, as there were 679 multifamily properties for sale at the end of August of 2023. When you compare our inventory levels today to those of August of 2010, and we are nearly five times fewer multifamily homes on the market. Inventory was down 36.2% in August 2023, year over year. So when you look at it this way, August's averages for the sales price, it wasn't pretty. The average sales price was down 3.4% when compared to August 2022. It felt like we were building on something great with June and July's data, and then we just took that step back. But as we've said before, if there is a market to get hurt, it's going to be this one. The debt service with the high interest rates have made it very difficult to break even, let alone make a profit on an investment property. This is what has impacted sales. But it's not just sales that are being affected by the higher interest rates. It also affects the inventory side. Landlords who bought or refinanced 2020, 2021, or first half 2022 have interest rates of the 3% range. Those properties are cash cows. Why would they want to sell them? Year to date, the average sales price is up by 0.28%. Nope. That's not great, but they aren't down for now. Frankly, I'm really impressed that the multifamily market is even in the green right now. I would have not expected that it was possible in the beginning of this year. This has been a tough year for the multifamily market. If it ends up slightly down or up, then I would put that down as a major win for the multifamily property owners. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? All my information, it's in the description below. I always love to talk real estate. Whether you're looking to buy in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just hear about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about possibly selling, then we can help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house 
for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your information, and then we'll reach out to you. Questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.